Governor-elect Brad Little is preparing to shoulder the huge responsibility of leading our state. He'll soon be sworn in as Idaho's 33rd governor. So, since the election, what has the Emmett Rancher and current Lieutenant Governor been doing to make his transition to the state's top job a smooth one? I'll ask. Plus, what are his immediate pressing priorities? What did he learn from being Governor Butch Otter's right-hand man? And what will set his own administration apart? A conversation with Idaho's next governor, Brad Little, ahead on Viewpoint. From Idaho's News Channel 7, this is Viewpoint. Welcome to Viewpoint, I'm Doug Petcash. For the first time in 12 years, Idaho will have a new governor when Brad Little takes over for Butch Otter. The Republican third generation Idaho rancher served as Idaho's 42nd Lieutenant Governor since 2009. He'll be sworn in as our 33rd governor on Friday, January 4th. The inauguration ceremony will take place at 12 noon on the south steps of the state capitol building. The ceremony will include the swearing in of the governor, Lieutenant Governor, Secretary of State, State Controller, Treasurer, Attorney General and Super Superintendent of Public Instruction, all of the constitutional officers. The event is free and the public is encouraged to attend. Then on Saturday, January 5th, the inaugural procession and ball will take place in the Capitol building. Doors open at 7 and the grand procession will start at 8. Tickets are 25 bucks for adults and $10 for kids 12 and under. We have a hot link on KTVB.com if you'd like to buy tickets to the big event. You can also buy them in person January 2nd through the 4th from 10 to 4 in the Capitol's garden level, which is the underground wings. And I'm honored now to have Governor-elect Brad Little as my only guest today to talk about preparing to take office and his plans and priorities for Idaho. Well, Governor-elect, first of all, congratulations on your, your win on November 6th. Thank you, Doug. So I'm curious, um, can you take us back to that day when, that night when you realized that the returns were going heavily in your favor and you knew you were gonna be the next governor, what was going through your mind? Well, the, uh, a lot of thanks. The people that that helped me, whether they were volunteers, staff, my family, people from one end of the state. It's pretty humbling, uh, you know, when people go out and make phone calls, go door to door. Uh, it it puts pretty good burden on your shoulder, and you should be thankful for it. I was gonna. That's my next question. Actually, was as you get closer take, to taking office, do you feel the weight of the responsibility do you do you contemplate oh, that oh yes uh you do and i've been to a couple uh, boot camps for rookie governors and uh i'm thankful that uh i've had the they have those <laughs> oh yeah two i've been to two boot camps uh for rookie governors i last week i was at the legislature and some of them were talking about being in freshman boot camp and i says Life's a series of being a freshman, whether you're in grade school or junior high or high school or college or work or the legislature or governor uh, and you, know, you need to be trained up. But I, I'm very thankful that I've had a lot of exposure. So what is the main thing on your mind as, not, I don't mean priority and legislatively, but just you know, in taking the reins and being the third governor, a 33rd governor, excuse me, of the well, state. Well, it's really policy, but you've, express your policy to the people of Idaho. That's what they elected you for. And then it's procedures and people. And that's what we're doing right now is, is hiring the people uh, to implement the policy and how we work with the procedures. I met with leadership of both the Senate and the House and had productive meetings with them now that they've been elected uh, last week. And what, what's our dialogue gonna be like? What are we, what's our, how are we gonna, get the work of the people done in the state of Idaho, and that's what we're working through. So yeah, could you pull the curtain back a little bit further for us in that regard? You know, what is it like on a day-to-day -day basis since November 6th as you, you know, you get not very much time to make that transition? Well, a, a lot of it is, is people. Um, who's who's going to be your, I've already selected my chief of staff. Uh, I've got a great chairman and the transition uh, committee. Uh, these people from one end of the state to the other are vetting the candidates that we have uh, for all the different cabinet positions. And that's what we're working on is, is filling those key positions. And so do you anticipate then change over at the, the heads of the departments? Oh, there'll be, oh yeah, there'll be quite a bit of change. And then, but there's some great people there and some of them will stay. And that's, that's what we're working for. Nobody had a job uh, when, when I got elected. Uh, it was, you know, it was wide open and the, and the transition committee has interviewed, I, I believe everybody that we're about to announce. 
And uh, want to give any secrets away yet on that? Or? Not yet, but we're getting pretty close. Okay. Um, and you're not, obviously, just to be clear, you're not talking about the constitutional officers who no. are elected. You're talking about the department heads, right. division heads, and, and such. Speaking, though, of um, uh, one of the elected officials who will be working closely with you, I think it was, very, it was perceived that you and Governor Otter were, were good partners and you were a good advisor for him, a close advisor, a trusted advisor. The new um, lieutenant governor coming in, J former representative Janice McGeehan as lieutenant governor, what role do you see uh, her playing in your administration? Well, well we're, she'll have a role, there's no question about it. She's, <coughs> she's, last week she was working on being president of the Senate because when the legislature starts, uh, she will preside over the state Senate. But I've already pondered some uh, things in the back of my mind that I you know, that I could have done, that I should have done, uh, that I'm hoping that uh, Lieutenant Governor McGeehan will, will step up and want to do. Now, you um, treated it pretty much as a full-time job, even though technically Lieutenant Governor is a part-time job. Do you kind of see that maybe setting a precedent for her and beyond? That's, that's up to her. It, mm -hmm. it, it, it is classified as a part-time job. Um, I just felt an obligation if, heaven forbid, something happened that I ought to learn the job. Mm -hmm. I had a known I had to get to know all the different aspects of the job from one end of the state to the other so that if something happened, uh, I could uh, represent the people of the state of Idaho. And as it turns out, the more I did that, the more I thought, you know, I'd really like to do this job. I think I can make a difference. And speaking of that, and what did you learn from Governor Otter uh, through that partnership that you'll take with you into your administration? A, a lot of things. You know, we when I first came in, we had a over 100,000 people out of work. We had, you know, double digit unemployment and you have to be adaptive. Uh, Idaho is a very rapidly changing state. Uh, you know, when he first started in, in the legislature, uh, there was a huge percent of our state that was dependent upon mining, agriculture, food processing, the timber industry. And now we've diversified our economy and what you do to facilitate that, whether it's in education, whether it's in infrastructure, uh, whether it's the social safety net programs, uh, it's that adaptive as the as the as people change, as the economy changes, as the world changes. Uh, how do you make Idaho adaptive? And that mm -hmm. that's a lot of it. How about as far as leadership style or management style that you've perhaps learned from Governor right. Otter, or or just not learned? I mean, you've been doing you know leadership stuff for a long time, but I mean, just in that particular office. Well, you know, one of the things that is is what's the degree of autonomy that you give uh, cabinet members uh, and and in some instances uh, if there's a transformative change that needs to take place how do you handle that mm -hmm. in in other areas where things are going fine uh, give all the professionals that we have in our in our departments all over the state all the leeway they need to get the goal accomplished you know, if it's in the social services area, how do you take care of the most needy? If it's in education, how do you allow, allow local school districts uh, to do a good job of getting our kids educated? If it's in the infrastructure area, how do you allow the local engineers and the people in the highway department to do maintenance in the best possible way? All those are different and agencies are, are different and you gotta pick people that will lead in those areas. So you don't consider yourself to be a micromanager? Then? No. That's um, pick the team and let them do their yes. jobs. Okay, uh, how's the inaugural dress coming along? It's, uh, we, we've got the big, you know, 30,000, 50,000 foot uh, issues, which are, you know, shouldn't surprise anybody. Right. They're what I've talked about. Uh, it'll be, you know, my relationship with all the former governors and what each one of them brought to my life. Uh, I'll talk about that a little bit about, you know, what, I think people want to know what makes me, me, uh, you know, they've, the people of Idaho have been gracious and have selected me as their governor and I want them to have confidence uh, of how I'm going to make decisions. Well, let's get into that a little bit more after we take a short break. Okay. So thank you again for all your time today. So still ahead on Viewpoint, the issues important to our new governor and what makes him, him, as he said, we'll talk about his legislative priorities and other issues coming up next. The Steakhouse Bacon Cheeseburger from Sonic. Crispy bacon, melty cheese, black pepper mayo, and grilled onions. No reservations required. 
The Steakhouse Burger and Tots for only $4.99. Get them now. Affordable? Yeah, we got that. Stylish? Got that covered, too. Quality? Oh, yeah, you can bet on it. At Furniture Row, we take pride in furniture that's quality made, affordable, and makes your home look great. And during the holiday sale, check out the Enzo Sofa, only $549, the La Jolla Bed, just $299, and the Keystone Mattress, only $359.99, plus five years no interest financing. Shop the largest selection at the lowest prices guaranteed. The holiday sale, on now at Furniture Row. Hey, Michelle. Oh, quite the haul. I know. <laughs> well, as a certified packing expert, you can trust me with all these. I thought the UPS store just did shipping. <laughs> we do boxing, addressing, labeling, sizing, custom boxing, yes. delivering, sorting, receiving, packaging, and of course, shipping. All yours. I should flag a cab. I'll take you. I'll start the car. For packing and shipping and every other in you'll need this holiday, trust your gifts to the UPS store. Is your loved one receiving the care they deserve? Now there's a new option. Discover personalized care at Cascadia of Nampa and Boise, bridging the gap between hospital and home. From full-time nursing to short-term rehabilitation, our professional team will provide the best care your loved one needs. Medicaid, Medicare, and private pay accepted. Welcoming new residents now. Cascadia of Nampa and Boise, call today. Sonic's Fritos Chili Cheese Faves, a Fritos Chili Pie, Juicy Junior Burger, or Junior Wrap. Does all this comfort come at a price? Yes, it starts at 99 cents. Hurry in for Sonic's Fritos Chili Cheese Faves. And welcome back to Viewpoint, I'm Doug Petcash. Since the November election, Governor-elect Brad Little has been putting his team together and working to make sure his transition into the governor's office is a smooth one. Since well before that, he's been formulating his political philosophy and priorities. Governor-elect Brad Little is my guest today. Um, so Governor, first of all, I guess, um, you're a third generation Idaho sheep and cattle rancher, and you talked about what makes you, you before the commercial break. How much did growing up and working on a ranch as a third generation rancher, form you both as a man and perhaps as a politician? Well, the other aspect of that is uh, I was raised and Teresa and I and our kids live in Emmett and right before I got into the legislature, we lost our major employer. So when the Boise Cascade sawmill closed down and I saw how, what, a, what an impact that had on, on my community and on the whole area, the whole region here when when Boise Cascade shut all their mills down. And that had an impact is how do you how do you create resilience in a community so when one of those things happens, uh, people can take pick up new careers, new opportunities. And that because of that's happened all over Idaho, whether it's timber industry, mining industry, agriculture, food processing, manufacturing. So it's, it's been a big goal mm -hmm. of, of myself and it'll be a goal of, of our administration that we build resilience into these communities and continue to diversify our economy. And did some of that uh, philosophy get built from having to have resilience to, to run a ranch and to, and to, you know, it's not an easy profession. Well, one of my sayings is change is inevitable. Uh, a adaptation and prosperity are optional. And, and we need to do all we can uh, to change as the world economy, as the national economy changes uh, to where people can prosper. And that's everything I do will uh, be in the direction of allowing that to happen in every corner of Idaho. You told me uh, back in February when we talked before the uh, general election that uh, you know, growing up working on a ranch, owning a ranch and doing all that um, formed you politically in a sense of being overregulated by the federal government. Oh, yeah. Does that apply? I mean, oh, yeah. It is one of the Republican uh, principles for sure. Well, that's th that, that is uh, an issue is that uh, and from the federal government, but also if decisions are made a long ways away instead of close to the ground, uh, we all complain about it. But when, when a local community and all the interest groups get together and come up with a solution, 
it's almost always better if it co than if it comes from Boise or Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. And that's a lot of it because we can agree on what the landscape of Idaho needs to look like. We want to protect water, wildlife, air, uh, you know, access. But the details of getting it done are best solved by the people that are there on the ground. So what is your top legislative priority going into year one? Well, I want people to stay in Idaho. So they've got to have a good job, increasing incomes. Education's a huge part of that. Those really good uh, students that graduate from high school and go off and then don't come back are a tragedy for the state of Idaho. I want all our kids uh, to select to stay here, whether they're a nuclear scientist or whether they're a, a, a woodworker or a framer or a mason. So how do you continue to bring that opportunity here for them? Well, A, they want to have a good job. B, they have to have an education, but they want a good education system for their kids. Uh, that's great bait for people to come back if they know we're going to have good schools here. They have to have affordable health care. They have, a, have to have a great quality of life. And finally, they have to have confidence in their government. A lot of the people that are moving from Oregon, Washington, and California and Idaho, one of the things that I talk to them about is they've lost, lost confidence in their government, and that's very important to me. Will you push to continue increasing funding for education? Absolutely. What we're in what um, categories? Well, we're in the fifth year of, of the task force recommendation, which is a career ladder. But Teacher pay raises. But, but something's very important to me is, is uh, literacy, is early childhood, that we get all these kids to the starting line of life, which is reading proficiently by the end of the third grade. And I want to put more work with the legislature to put more resources in that area. Um, report just came out um, from Legislative Services Office that we're on track to have roughly $63 million less in tax revenue than budget forecasters predicted, $16 million lower than expected in November. How much does that concern you? It does concern me. My understanding in legislative leadership, the governor, DFM, we've all talked about this. When we did the big tax cut last year, mm -hmm. $120 million tax cut, we, the way we withhold, the way people, individuals withhold, uh, was not adjusted. A lot of people didn't adjust. So in essence, they're having less taken out of their paychecks, so they're keeping more. They're going to have a... A, uh, in April, when their taxes are due, uh, there's going to be money owed them. We need to let the people of Idaho know. Uh, you mean they're going to owe the state money? That's right. Yeah. That's right. And, and so we believe at the end of the year, we're going to be closer to projection. But I feel that we have an obligation to tell the people of Idaho, they need to look at their withholding. They need to start planning for that because most people in Idaho, for a variety of reasons, over withheld and then in April or you know March or April, they got this refund check from the state of Idaho. Uh, that's not gonna be the case the way the withholding, and it's just kind of the way our withholding matches up with the federal withholding. Mm -hmm. I hate for Idaho to have a different form, but that's where I believe that shortage is coming from. In one of your campaign ads, you did say that you would like to give the people of Idaho another tax break, another tax cut. Do you think that's still feasible right now, or do you need to wait to see how all this uh, issue plays you, out? You nailed it. That we, I, my pledge to continue to decrease taxes was predicated on we need to maintain our promise to education. Uh, the, those commitments for teacher uh, pay, uh, for literacy issues, but that still doesn't, that means it's still in the queue. We'll figure out where the money is, plan on the money, budget for the money, and have it for grocery tax, uh, d d taking the sales tax off of groceries in the future. Which would then also, of course, eliminate the grocery tax credit to right. make do for that. That's correct. What do we do about all this growth we're seeing that's, that's so rapid? Well, uh, A, we have to train people for the new economy, but a lot of those issues is we should not hamstring cities, counties. Uh, that's where that needs to be decided. Neighbors need to get together and say, uh, yes, we want more job opportunities for our kids, or no, we're, we're happy. Let's tap the brakes a little bit on what we're doing. But we have to plan in the infrastructure area, whether it's uh, connectivity through the internet or roads and bridges. 
first we have to keep everybody safe so the bridges have to be invested in and second we got to have capacity so as the population continues to grow uh, we give people their most precious commodity and that's their time getting to work getting home from work mm -hmm. uh, that's <laughs> Very important. Um, big issue, of course, in the election was Medicaid expansion. Um, you've promised to implement it if, the people want, if, if it was the people's will. But right now, there's a lawsuit in the uh, Idaho Supreme Court. What do you anticipate the impact of that having on implementation? And will you still push for implementation? Oh, yes. I, my commitment to implement uh, Medicaid expansion. Uh, I've been in talks with uh, uh, the Federal uh, Department of Health and Welfare, which is where any waivers, any changes, mm -hmm. uh, what, what our track record is. I've been in uh, talks with uh, two of the other governors that uh, they have, their state has made the decision to uh, expand Medicaid and all those talks, we're gonna work through that. The, the people that advocated for it, I've had conversations with them, uh, but I have to work with the legislature because uh, we have to have some money but almost more importantly, we have to shift some money around, whether it's a cat fund. For the 10 percent match. Right, yeah, correct. Um, but with it being tied up in the Supreme Court, do you anticipate that that will delay it much or is it? Well, it, it, I, I believe it's going to be heard in January. And so that we, we have to start out with the conversation. So now, you can have the conversations yeah, in the legislature right. while that's yeah, going on exactly. and kind of work on the nuts and bolts. All right. One more segment after this, Governor. Um, thank you so much again for sticking around. And when we come back, maybe some things you don't know about Idaho's next governor. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Strap in and hold on tight. The all-new Quest Network is here. Enter the worlds of our compelling characters. Join in on amazing adventures. Witness man's most stunning conquests and be prepared to be inspired and entertained. The best new channel on television is now 7.4. Quest, let's explore. We really love the holidays at Graham Graham's, but it's tough to... Relax. <sighs> the dish guy heard us. Said with the Dish Anywhere app, we could bring the comfort of our home TV along with us. Oh. Live TV, on demand, even our DVR shows. Feel good shows. <laughs> that put us right at ease. Mostly. So many eyes. Take live TV, on demand, and your home DVR anywhere. Dish, tuned into you. It's not just how you celebrate. It's the food you celebrate with. That's how you holiday. Fueling your sleigh for less. That's how you holiday. Welcome to the Titan Game. The most insane athletic competition ever devised, inspired by the workouts that have fueled me. We have teachers, we have dentists, we have people from Wall Street. I work with children with mental disabilities. At 50 years old, you can be strong. I'm doing it to show the world that I have what it takes. Continuing our conversation now with Governor-elect Brad Little, a couple of minutes to talk about things you may not know about him. First of all, congratulations on celebrating your 40th anniversary with your Thank wife, Teresa, you. this year. Um, how big of a role does she play in your political life? In my life, she plays a huge role. Uh, she will tell you that uh, she's not political, but uh, incredible instincts. I'm amazed that we'll be traveling somewhere and she will get right to the bottom line, the critical component of it real fast, because she's really a people person. She cares about people. She's always uh, admonishing me to be a better listener, and she's a great listener. Uh, she writes great notes. Uh, everybody that, I, I called a CEO of a company up, and he said he just talked to his key people, and took one of the notes from my wife and gave it as an example about one of the things that uh, they need to do. And it's, it's those instincts and doing the right thing. 
And your boys, Adam and David, yep. are uh, both here in Idaho with their with your grandchildren. And we right? are we couldn't be happier. Um, how do you decompress? Uh, family, uh, that's a lot. The, the ranch and family. Mm -hmm. uh, going out to the ranch is is a big. Uh, last weekend or weekend before last, we uh, the boys and I went out and went bird hunting and. Uh, that was a great, uh, great decompression, mm -hmm. and going out to the ranch is a big part of it. Did you ride your old horse there that we saw in some of that video uh, earlier? I, I, I haven't been, but uh, in this, <laughs> I, I usually do it when the weather's nice. It takes a little while uh, longer to get around on the campaign trail in a horse yes, than, than it does yes. in a car. Um, all right, off the wall question here. What do you have for breakfast? Oatmeal, my own uh, secret recipe. Your own secret recipe. That's right. Oh, I guess I can't ask you what the secret is. Well, it's is, got it's got uh, uh, flax and uh, Chobani yogurt that I customize and Idaho honey on it. It's uh, I, I make oatmeal pretty darn good. Look at Brad Little's homemade oatmeal That's sold right. at local store. I mean, maybe you got something there. It's another another side hustle you can right. get into. Um, real briefly, that do you have a favorite sport? Uh, college football. College football. Okay. And do you have a hobby? Uh, uh, fishing and hunting. I, I play golf mainly on the, in fundraisers and tournaments. That's that's my uh, uh, my sons and my father-in-law and my brother-in-law are all good golfers. Uh, I'm a very poor golfer, but I enjoy it uh, either with the family or with a bunch of friends. Well, sir, I certainly appreciate your time. Um, and your, your candor on these answers for some questions that you don't always get. But um, best wishes to you. Thank, thanks, Congratulations, Doug. and wish you all the success. Thank you. I appreciate that. Well, folks, if you would like to see the inauguration, here's some more information for you. Once again, the inauguration ceremony will take place at 12 noon on the south steps of the state capitol building. The ceremony will include the swearing in of the governor and all of the constitutional officers. The event is free and the public is encouraged to attend. I want to say also that the Army National Guard, or the Idaho National Guard is in charge of this event and they're putting all of those arrangements together and they encourage the public to come. Then on Saturday the 5th, the inaugural procession and ball will take place in the Capitol building. Doors open at seven, the grand procession starts at eight. Tickets are $25 for adults, $10 for kids 12 and under. The idea is to make it affordable for all Idahoans to be able to come to witness an historic event in our state's history. Now we have a hot link on KTVB.com if you'd like to buy tickets. You can also buy them in person in the Capitol's garden level January 2nd through the 4th from 10 to 4. That's in the underground wings there at the Capitol building. Well, that is all of our time for this week's Viewpoint. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Doug Petcash. Have a great day.